right guys, so we're gonna unbox the Nitro deck right now. We're gonna check this out, see what's in here. And then I'm gonna be doing a hands-on review with this. So I'm gonna be playing it for probably about a week and then I'm gonna have my review out, okay? So if you don't know anything yet about the Nitro deck, it's a housing unit for your Nintendo Switch. It has Hall Effect thumbsticks. It's obviously built for comfort. It's more ergonomic. It has ultra low latency, remappable back buttons. It comes with a carrying case. And one of the things that I probably love the most about this is that it has a regular old school D-pad. As you know, the Nintendo Switch has a D-pad, but the D-pad uses buttons. And it's just not the same for me as a standard D-pad. That's just me. It's a very minor thing, right? It's not like something that destroyed the way I played video games. It didn't water down the experience really. But would I have preferred a D-pad? Absolutely. And so this fixes that as well. And as you guys can see, this is a limited edition Nitro deck. And if you're familiar, of course, with the Nintendo GameCube, this is the GameCube Nitro deck essentially. Now they don't call it that because I'm sure they can't for copyright purposes. So at any rate, that's what it is here. We're gonna get this busted open. It comes in a very nice box and it's got this little strap here which is kind of funny. I'm actually curious if the other Nitro decks have this strap because it totally reminds me of the GameCube's handle. So if they did that just as a nod to the GameCube, that would be quite hilarious. And I, I'd, re I'd really respect that to be honest with you. So I was able to get this on Black Friday or during the, the Black Friday savings. So I think I picked this up for $59.99. I think with shipping, tax, all that, it was about $70 out the door, which is pretty damn good. Normally the limited edition goes for, I believe 89 or 99. And then you have like the normal, not non-limited edition ones that are just like black or white, normal colors. They go for 59.99. So essentially I was able to get a GameCube version for a lot less. Again, here's the box that comes in. You got the CRKD logo that's cracked. And that's the company's name. And I'm gonna try and figure out how to open up this box without destroying it. Okay, here we go. As you can see, you open this up and here's the case for it. So really cool that it comes in a case. I like that. And it's smart on their part because if you have your Switch connected to this, it's not going to fit in most carrying cases, right? So it's cool that they just provide one. I think also that's part of the limited edition is that it comes with a carrying case. I don't know if the standard ones do. I'm thinking they don't because I did see on their website that they were selling the carrying cases separate. So I'm guessing these standard may not come with it. Uh, that's something you might want to look into if you're interested in buying this. It looks like you got a strap for the e-carrying case as well. So I'll just kind of put this to the side for now. And then let's just open this up so everything is stored in the case, which is pretty cool. All right, here we go. Excited to see how this looks. Oh yeah, look at that. Okay, first thing, uh, welcome to the Cracked family. And just a little uh, little website here for a quick start guide and the quick start app. Uh, you got a good size instruction booklet here. I think there's just tons of languages probably. On the back of the box, I think they had about seven or eight different languages support it. And important, before attaching the Switch to the Nitro Deck, open Switch console settings and turn on Switch Pro Controller wired connection. So I did see that online. I saw that on Crack's YouTube page because I went to their page, you know, of course, to research it. I've watched some other people's reviews and of course after watching it, I'm like, yeah, you know what? I do think I want to get this. Like, I know the Switch 2 is coming out soon. You know, another rumor just came out today that seems like it could be a reliable rumor, but who knows? But the rumor stated that Switch 2 news and the release could be very, very early 2024. And to me, that sounds like quarter one, 2024. So again, the new Switch might be out soon, but I'm not going to get rid of my OG Switch. And so I still felt like this was a good purchase, especially at $59.99 for the Black Friday sale. I think if it was a hundred bucks, I don't know if I would have got it, but I guess we'll find out after I've tested this for about a week here. All right, so this is it, and it looks exactly like a GameCube controller, which is really cool because the screen's gonna go right in here. So you're essentially playing your Switch with sort of like a GameCube controller, and I don't know about you guys, but like when I play Smash Brothers, I still use a GameCube controller. If Nintendo wouldn't have made that an option, that would have been fine, and I would have just used my Switch Pro controller 
But because Nintendo made it an option to use GameCube controllers, I was all over that. Because to me, the GameCube controller is just perfect for Super Smash Brothers Ultimate. And then on the back here, you guys can see, we got two back buttons and these are the programmable buttons. So you can program these for whatever you want. Like you can literally program them to go back. So if you wanna go back a page, you press the back button. And again, like, is that necessary? No, but it's cool, right? Like, I think that's a nice function. And again, you guys can see here, we got an actual D-pad. And again, I'll be testing that out to see how it feels. And you got the yellow stick over here, just like we had on the GameCube. We got the colored buttons like we had on the cube. So this is really cool. And then we got the shoulder buttons here. You can hear the clicks. Listen right here, I got the mic on my jacket. Okay, that's your L1, R1, and here's your ZL, ZR. Feel fine. Now, clicking in the joysticks for you guys so you can hear it. So I'm gonna click in this joystick. Feels fine. Feels fine. And then the buttons. They feel good. Again, I'm not gonna know until I actually play this because you guys know that you gotta test this out. You really gotta put it through its paces before you know if this was truly worth it or not. So I'm gonna play this over the next week. I got a new game to play. I got Dragon Quest Monsters of the Dark Prince. We're gonna see how this is. I will be reviewing this game soon once the credits roll because I will never review a game unless I beat it. But once the credits roll on this, I will get this reviewed and I am gonna be playing a good majority of it on this. I will have to hook it up to my TV from time to time to capture some game footage, but I'm gonna try and play like half the game on this so you get a really good idea of if this is worth buying or not. So I'll kind of cut the video off right here and I'll give you guys my final thoughts in about a week, all right? All right guys, so I put in about 40 hours with the Nitro deck over the last five days. And I'm ready to give you my complete thoughts on the device and whether or not I think it's worth your money. With that said, let's dive right into the Nitro deck's core features, or you could say the big selling points of the device, if you will. And if those big selling points are marketing fluff, or if this is the real deal holy field. So I'll start with the biggest pro, which has to be the much improved level of comfort that Nitro Deck provides. When I bought my Switch at launch, I played it all the time in both portable and docked mode, but as the years went on, I barely played in portable mode unless I was traveling. I think the main reason I stopped playing in portable mode was that it simply was not comfortable on my hands. Maybe it's my older age or all the wear and tear I put on my body over the years, but my hands would ache after playing the Switch, and I have a very high tolerance for pain. I think between pounding away on the keyboard for 12 to 14 hours a day in the mortgage industry, to playing basketball my whole life, and then to holding a different controller in my hands all the time, I felt like the Joy-Cons just dug into this part of my hands where they feel all knotted up. Now obviously each person's level of comfort is going to vary with the Joy-Cons, but for me, I immediately felt the much improved level of comfort using the Nitro Deck. I no longer feel like the Switch is digging into my hands, which is really nice. Another thing that I really liked that they listed in their features is just really the added heft of the device. It's still lightweight, but looking at pictures, the Nitro Deck appears pretty bulky compared to the Joy-Cons, but the weight is evenly distributed. Now, I don't have a Steam Deck, but looking at pictures and reading other people's opinions, it's much like holding a Steam Deck except lighter in weight. A Steam Deck weighs in at 1.65 pounds, while the Switch Nitro Deck weighs in at 1.3 pounds total. So to give you some added perspective, just the Switch OLED screen weighs 320 grams, while the Nitro Deck weighs 274 grams. So the screen is actually heavier than the entire Nitro Deck. So what does all of this mean? It means that I was actually able to play the new Dragon Quest Monsters 3 on my Nitro Deck with a 100% battery level, and I played it until it hit 5% battery life with literally zero discomfort. That's when I knew that the Nitro Deck was a game changer for me. 
So another feature that they talk about, guys, is the zero stick drift. And this is a big deal. So of course, stick drift usually appears after using the joysticks over an extended period of time. Most Switch fans are familiar with stick drift because they've either experienced it themselves or they know someone who has. Stick drift is a problem where a Nintendo Switch Joy-Con controller acts as though something is moving the control stick even when nothing is. This can mean the camera, cursor, or characters on your Switch keep moving even when you aren't touching the controller. So stick drift can not only hinder the user experience, but potentially ruin it. The Nitro Deck fixes the potential for stick drift to appear by using Hall Effect joysticks. So unlike standard analog sticks, which use electrical resistance to detect movement, Hall Effect joysticks have no physical contact between the moving parts. This means that they do not wear out easily and that they do not develop stick drift. So that's a huge one, guys. Another one that they talk about, another feature that they talk about is the latency. Now I put in probably, like I said, 40 hours on the Nitro deck since I received it earlier this week. I've said this before in some of my other videos, but I am super sensitive to latency and input lag. If the Nitro deck had it, I would tell you, and I would not be able to recommend the Nitro deck to you. But in my 40 plus hours of game time this week, I felt absolutely no latency whatsoever. Another feature guys, they have swappable thumbstick toppers. Now two reasons this is cool. One, if your joystick toppers wear out, you can swap them instead of buying a brand new controller. And the Nitro Deck itself comes with a set of replacements for each joystick. Additionally, if you want to customize your Nitro Deck, you can buy a few different colored toppers with different textures on the joystick on Nitro Deck's website for 20 bucks. And it comes with a pack of eight, meaning that you should never need to buy them again, which is pretty cool. Now, another one is they have remappable back buttons. Now, I watched a video on their official YouTube channel that explains how to map the back buttons. And the Nitro Deck comes with an instruction manual that clearly states how to map the back buttons. If you don't map them, then by default, they are mapped as your LR and your LZ RZ buttons. Now, I actually found it to be pretty convenient to keep them in the default settings because as I was playing Dragon Quest Monsters, I was able to move the camera without even repositioning my hands by using the back buttons. Now, this is a feature I probably won't use, but I still appreciate that it's there in case I ever do want to use it. Now, another feature that they tout is that it's gyro compatible. Now, guys, I don't really use the gyro controls unless I'm playing a, the actual Wii, but I did test this out and it functioned exactly as it should. Now, another one is the rumble support. Now, one of my subscribers, Michael J3648, specifically want to know if the Nitro deck has rumble support and if so, how good is it? So to answer the first question, yes, it does have rumble support. And the rumble motor appears to be plenty powerful as the rumble felt like it was on a high setting. Almost like it was on steroids. <laughs> now, I watched some reviews on the Nitro Deck stating the rumble felt either too strong or felt like it was maybe an older version of the rumble. And I'd have to say that my experience with the rumble is pretty similar. It doesn't feel as good as the HD rumble but I gotta say that it really didn't bother me. To me, the king of rumble right now is the PlayStation's DualSense controller. And the other benefits of the Nitro Deck make you forget about if the rumble is as good as the Joy-Con's HD rumble. Ultimately, I'd say it's close, but not as good as the Joy-Con rumble, but it is pretty close, guys. Now, the D-pad, that's another big feature. This was one that I was very excited about. Now, I've never been a fan of using buttons in place of an actual D-pad, and the Nitro Deck solves this issue. The D-pad feels good, and I didn't notice any issues with D-pad responsiveness or any dead spots while using the D-pad. As you can see, I tested out a handful 
of Nintendo Switch online games from the NES, SNES, Sega, and Game Boy, and even the N64. And the D-pad works to perfection. These games were meant to be played with a standard D-pad, not a button D-pad or joystick. So now I can enjoy all these classic games on my Switch and I can control it just like I did in the 80s and 90s. So I really appreciate that. Now, before I wrap it up, I'm going to attempt to answer some questions that I think might come up at some point if I don't answer them now. So first, one thing that's really cool is the Nitro Deck has pass-through charging, meaning I can play the Nitro Deck while it's charging. Now you guys can see here that the plug-in is actually on the back side of the deck, to which I think is actually more conveniently located than on the bottom of the Switch. Second, you can use the Nitro Deck as a standalone controller. So if you have family or friends over and you need a second controller, or maybe you're playing four player smash and you need a fourth controller, you can plug it right into your switch and use it on your big screen TV. Third, this does have a kickstand and it's better than the original switch stand and the OLED stand. Better because to me, it's way more sturdier and it displays at a taller height, which for me is better. But if you prefer shorter height, it can do that too. Lastly, the Nitro Deck gives you the ability to add a turbo button. So back in the day, we had the NES Advantage joystick and legit, it was one of the advantages of the controller because it had a turbo button, which was pretty cool when you're playing a game like track and field or say Contra and you want your gun to be on rapid fire. All right. Now that I went over all the features, I'm ready to give you my final thoughts. To me, the Nitro Deck feels like it has a lot of features that a Switch Pro model would have had had it ever come out. Obviously, there were plenty of rumors. Then we had a pandemic and manufacturing came to a halt and the Switch received a second life from the pandemic and the success of Animal Crossing. I think at that point, Nintendo probably said, we don't know when this pandemic is going to be over. And the OG Switch was flying off the shelf. So instead we got an OLED Switch. I think many of the features in the Nitro deck will actually make it into the Switch 2. Now I think the Switch 2 will have Hall Effect joysticks to fix drift. I think it will be much more comfortable to hold so players can partake in longer play sessions. I could see it having remappable buttons like we see now with the Elite Xbox controller and Sony's DualSense Edge. So the question is, is this worth it if the Switch 2 is coming out in 2024 and do you plan on being a day one adopter? I'd say that if you plan on keeping your Switch, then yes, it absolutely is worth it for all the reasons I mentioned in my review. All of the features that Nitro Deck touts are extremely legit. It's not a bunch of marketing fluff. It actually is the real deal Holyfield. I was able to get my Nitro Deck guys on sale during Black Friday and Cyber Monday for about $70 with tax and shipping, and it came with a lovely carrying case. Now, as of the time of this review, you can get the same Nitro deck shown in today's review that comes with the carrying case for $72 as they are currently running a 20% off promotion for the Nostalgia Editions. Now, if you don't want a case and you want to go with like a regular black Nitro deck, you can get one on Amazon for $59.99. Now, I think for me, the price is right. This was worth the investment because... I look forward to playing games in portable mode again. The other thing about the Switch 2, guys, that we still don't know is if it's going to be backwards compatible or not. There's rumors that have been floating around for a while stating third-party developers prefer the Switch 2 not to be backwards compatible, citing that if it is, then they have to compete with all the Switch 1 legacy software on top of Switch 2 games. Now, in my opinion, I think we will find out very early next year all the details regarding the Switch 2. So if you want, you can wait until then. If you don't plan on buying a Switch 2 and you're planning on sticking with the Switch 1, 
I cannot give this product a better recommendation. Now, even if you're planning on buying a second controller, why not just buy a Nitro deck? It's the same price. The fact that this has the added versatility to double as a second controller to me is a huge selling point and should not be overlooked. So all in all guys, I am super happy with my purchase. I can undoubtedly say that I will be a day one switch to adopter. I bought my Nintendo systems on launch day since Nintendo 64. So you know I'm going to be there on day one and even still, the Nitro deck is well, well worth it. All right, guys, that wraps it up. As always, thank you for tuning in to today's video. If you are new to the channel, please subscribe and hit the like button as it helps me out a ton and drop a comment. Thank you all, and I hope you have an awesome day. What's up, guys? If you enjoyed this video, please smash the like button as it helps me out a ton. And if you haven't already, please consider subscribing to the channel. Over here to the left, you can find all my social media info or just remember to search for ThunderSteve85. As always, thank you guys for tuning in and remember, you're never too old to play video games.